This lecture covers the Myriapoda, a clade within the Arthropoda, a group that you're probably familiar with as either the millipedes or the centipedes. So we've covered the chelicerates, the first group of arthropods, and now we're going to talk about the lineages in the mandible clade, the mandibulata. And the first of these is the Myriapoda. The name Myriapoda means many legs or many feet, as, and we'll show you why in a minute. They do not have compound eyes. Uh, they've lost this as a, a group entirely. And as far as tagmata goes, they have a head, but then a series of individual segments that represent the trunk. So these are more vermiform animals in general. The Chilopoda represent the centipedes, about a 3,000 species. The diplopoda represent the millipedes, about 10,000 species. So here we have a centipede on the left and millipedes on the right. Again, the name means many legs, and they move through either terrestrial undulation, so there's a lot of kind of whipping back and forth, particularly in the centipedes, or a more slow, crawling, coordinated movement of the individual legs in the millipedes. Again, two tagmata, a head region, and then a long trunk. And in the centipedes, each body segment has one pair of appendages coming off of it. So if you look at this figure here, we have an appendage going off the left side and the same joint region, we have uh, one coming off the right. The next segment, we've got a left leg and a right leg. So there's a left and a right for each segment. In the millipedes, however, if you look across them, it looks like they have a lot more legs, and this is why these are called the thousand-leggers, and the centipedes usually referred to as the hundred-leggers. It's not exactly true. They don't have a hundred legs or a, a thousand legs, but there are clearly more legs in millipedes because, except in the front sections, which it's not showing here, but starting with this segment here, for each segment you have a pair on the left and a pair on the right. So instead of two legs per segment, we have four legs per segment. They do have antenna and simplified eyes in both of the lineages, centipedes and millipedes. And the last set of legs in the uh, centipedes are also used as sensory structures, as you can see here. Centipedes are uh, predaceous, going after insect and earthworms. The first pair of legs have been modified, in fact, as maxillipeds with uh, poisonous claws and venom. Millipedes, however, are herbivorous, so they do not have these jaws with venom glands. As far as respiration goes, they have a tracheal tube system, so a series of, of external spiracles leading to snorkel tubes that go to different parts of the body and branch off to deliver oxygen to different cells in the, in the body and also take away CO2 and get rid of it uh, back out the spiracle. So these would be distributed throughout the body. Here's just showing one down here in this centipede. As far as excretions, they have Malpighian tubules. And so the Malpighian tubules are these long, thin tubules that are connected uh, to the digestive tract. So they're selectively resorbing fluids and concentrating nitrogenous waste and then dumping it into the digestive tract uh, for the deposition with the feces. And so it doesn't take a lot of water. This is a, a way to really save a lot of water in these organisms. As far as reproduction goes, um, like most of the other arthropods we've talked about, they're dioecious and they show copulation. So some of them are oviparous and some uh, do show viviparity. They have direct development of young um, that are pretty much just smaller versions of the adults, but the juvenile millipedes I do only have one pair of legs per segment, unlike the adults that have, again, two pair of legs per segment. They can live for a substantial uh, time period, so five to ten years is seen uh, commonly in some species, but there is no sociality. They're all solitary. Now, one of the things that you'll notice about millipedes and centipedes is oftentimes they're brightly colored, so they're showing aposematic coloration. The centipedes are doing this to tell you that they could hurt you. Remember, they've got the maxillopeds with the fangs and the venom, so they can give you a pretty nasty bite. Millipedes 
they're not going to bite you. They're not going to cause you any harm that way. But if you pick these up, they smell really bad and uh, the smell really lingers. So if you pick one of these up, your hands are going to smell pretty nasty for a while. And so what they're trying to signal to a potential predator is, if I smell this bad, can you imagine how badly I could taste? They're primarily found in tropical and temperate habitats, and they're uh, fairly diverse in that uh, area. They also can be found uh, pretty regularly in very dry habitats. And climate change could impact them primarily by uh, changing the distribution of those that are living kind of on the edge of their ranges. Uh, so those living in some of the colder climates, again, could be pushed uh, into narrower, narrower habitats because of the warming of those environments and those living on the opposite end, really hot environments, uh, may be living at their thermal practical limit anyway. And so that could be a problem. So uh, we're talking about the Myriapoda, which represents centipedes and the millipedes. They have two tagmata, a head and a trunk. And they differ with the centipedes having a single pair of legs per segment and the millipedes having two pair of legs per segment. They do have antenna with simple eyes and sensory legs in the centipedes. The, as far as foraging goes, they differ by the centipedes being predators and the millipedes being herbivores. But they uh, both respire using tracheal tube systems and get rid of nitrogenous waste using malpighian tubules. They're dioecious, showing copulation and direct development and they are relatively long-lived. But there aren't any species in either of the lineage that shows any social behavior or any symbiotic rela relationships to any significant degree. I mean, they do have, for example, some mites that are commensals or parasites associated with them, but uh, they are not kind of the, the commensals or the parasite or uh, anything like that to uh, another larger organism. And we talked about some of their defensive structures associated with their aposomatic coloration, either being venomous or uh, noxious in tasting and smelling. 